Okay, let's talk about how to deal with negative exponents. So uh, when you're dealing with negative exponents in algebra, so uh, this would be an example, a to the negative n, you need to know this particular rule. So a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. But this uh, one rule, okay, and it's you know, kind of a property, is part of a set of other properties that we need to know about powers and exponents. Okay, this is very, very important, critical to your success in algebra. So I'm going to quickly review those other uh, rules. I'm just going to highlight them. I'm not going to get into them in detail because we're going to focus mainly on this particular rule. So if you're struggling with negative exponents, it can be a little confusing at first. Uh, if you stick with me for a few minutes, I uh, guarantee you almost, okay, there's no real guarantees except for death and taxes in life, but if you stick with me for a few minutes, I'm pretty sure you'll walk away with a happy face and you're like, okay, now I understand negative exponents. I'm ready to go get that A plus and 100% on my quiz test or whatever the case might be. But first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. That's a bold statement. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. Um, I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. We're going to be having pre-calculus here soon, college algebra, introductory algebra. I have a lot of different courses like that. But I also have many specialty uh, math uh, courses, a lot of in test preparation. So if you're getting ready for, like, say, the GED high set task, a teacher certification, CLEP exam, AccuPlacer, um, there's so many different uh, tests out there that require math. Uh, you have like a nursing entrance exam. Uh, all those different type of tests okay, require math. And if you don't pass those tests, oftentimes, you know, a lot's writing on it, whether you can get into a particular uh, vocational school or get your teacher certification. So a lot of people study math that are outside of a math course and, need to, and they need to review a lot of uh, high school level mathematics. So if that's you, you definitely want to check out uh, my website and uh, go through my catalog of test prep courses. I'm pretty sure I, I will have what you're looking for. If I don't, drop me a line in the contact form and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Now, I also do a lot with uh, independent learners like homeschoolers. I actually have a great homeschool learning system. And then, obviously, I help those of you who are in math classes like right now. Let's say you're taking algebra and you're struggling and uh, you need additional help, then I can definitely help you out. But first things first, you need to start helping yourself out, and that is by taking great notes. So over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is clear to me. Those students who take great notes almost always end up having the best math grades. Okay, They look like this person at the end of the year. And then the reverse is true. Those students who like to do their homework in class for another class uh, or look at their phone, okay, their little, you know, cell phone, smartphone, or checking out their, you know, uh, Facebook and all this other good stuff. Listen, I get it. I was a student once and I was completely distracted. And if we had cell phones, maybe smartphones back in my days in the 1980s, boy, I tell you, I don't even know if I would even graduate because I would be totally distracted. So there are tons of distractions um, around us all the time. So I get that. So the only way you're going to remain focused learning on math is to engage in something that's going to require your concentration and complete attention. And that's what note taking is. It's critical. Okay. You won't be successful uh, learning mathematics unless you're taking great notes. So you definitely got to um, you know, work on your note taking if you know, you're not taking notes or your notes are kind of sloppy. There's a ton of uh, improvement that you can make, and it's going to show up in your grades, okay? All right, so, but in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into negative exponents and how to... Uh, uh, really deal with the confusion behind this rule. It's not that difficult, but um, again, any kind of property that's given to us like this can be, you know, a little bit intimidating. So let's get to it. So what we're talking about is dealing with a situation like this. So here, again, is the um, rule for dealing with negative exponents. So if we encounter something like x to the negative 2, it's not, I don't want to say proper, but yeah, I guess maybe that's the word, um, the correct way of saying it. 
we don't want to leave our final answers with negative exponents in algebra. Okay, we like to leave our final answers with positive exponents. That's pretty typical. And uh, so uh, your, your, most of your teachers out there are going to require you to fully simplify down to a positive exponent. So x to negative 2, in this particular example, you're going to see this is going to be equal to 1 over x squared. Okay, so you can see we're just following the rule, the pattern here. So we're going to reinforce this and really get you to... Um, you know, understand this and kind of master this rule. Uh, I got about six, five or six different practice problems we're going to do here in just one second. But this rule, negative exponents, is a uh, one of other rules that you need to know about powers and exponents. So if you're studying this, then you need to understand this rule. All right, let me just write it out. So this is the product of powers. So if two powers have the same base, then we have then what we do is just add the exponents. Okay, I'm not going to cover this rule, although I have other videos in my algebra playlist that cover this rule. And another rule that you need to know is a division of powers and exponents. So in this case, you subtract the exponents if the bases are the same. Okay, so this is another rule that you need to know. And then there's another one, a to the zero, that's equal to one. Anything to the zero power is equal to one, so that's nice and easy. So these rules here, okay, uh, are uh, part of the properties of powers and exponents, and this guy as well. So we would just write this guy down here. Let's go ahead and put him down here. A to the negative n is equal to one over a to the n. So knowing the rules, uh, you know, that's a good start. But it's really, you know, how do we, you know, practically apply these in real you know, uh, problems, okay? So the first thing is you want to take these rules and make sure they're in your notes and then have all these uh, examples so you can reference when you're doing your homework. And I know all of you out there do 100% of the homework uh, questions, right? Wrong, okay? Listen, uh, after collecting homework for many, many years, you know, not everybody does all the homework. Well, listen, don't feel so bad about it. Try to do all the homework, okay? If you can't do all the homework, do the best you can. Uh, but the more homework uh, you can uh, complete, you know, that you're practicing math, okay? And then you're going to figure out what you know and don't know and then ask questions to your teacher the next day. All right, so let's get to some practice problems here and make sure you understand negative exponents. So again, here is our rule, okay? So let's just follow the pattern. A to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the, a positive n, okay? So... In this first example, what are we going to do? Well, this is a negative exponent, just like this. Okay, so we're going to write this 1 over, okay, we're going to put this down here. We're just going to follow the pattern, y, and now the negative here becomes positive. All right, so that is the answer. y to the negative fifth is equal to 1 over y to the positive fifth power. Okay? So if you want to kind of play along here and practice these as I, you know, uh, do these, then that'd be like a little pop quiz here. So give yourself, if you got that right, give yourself a check mark and little stars, a couple stars here. So that's good. So let's see if you can handle the next problem. All right, so we have xt, all this to the negative third power. So this is a little bit more interesting, but you can think of this whole thing here, xt, as like a. Okay, it's a base. So this would be equal to 1 over xt to the positive third power. Now, I could distribute this negative uh, third power exponent into these exponents. We'll just leave it like this. Okay, this is an equivalent answer. I just want you to get the, the, uh, the rule down, all right? And let's uh, make sure you have that rule. You should write that down here. I'll put this down over here again so you can kind of reference it. A to, the a to the negative n, I could do that a little bit better, a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the positive n. So there's the rule. Okay, so, so far we've been dealing with variables, but this, is, this thing applies um, with numbers as well. So here I have 7 to the negative uh, 2 power, okay? So how can I write that? 1 over 7 to the positive 2 power, or 7 squared. Okay, so if you got that right, give yourself a check mark. You're doing fantastic. Now, let's go down here. Okay, now this one's a little bit uh, more interesting. All right, you're like, oh, wait a minute, hold on here. It's, this guy's in the denominator, it's negative. 
what do you want me to do here? Well, yes, this is where the confusion starts. A lot of students are like, hmm, wait a minute. You know, what happened to those easy problems like x to the negative 2? You know, I'm not into these more challenging problems. Well, you're going to have to learn how to deal with these guys, all right? So let's do this the long way, and then I'm going to show you the a shortcut way to handle these guys, all right? So this would be 1 over, now g to the negative third power is going to be the same thing as what? Let's just talk about g to the negative third power by itself. This is the same thing as 1 over g to the positive third power, correct? Okay, so I could make myself a little complex fraction here, 1 over g to the third power, all right? Now, what does this mean? Well, this is 1 divided by this, okay? So let's write it out this way, 1 divided by 1 over g to the cube power, okay? So this is, you can see how we're doing this? This is 1 divided by 1 divided by this guy right here. So you can see kind of like what's going on with this expression if we write it out this way. So how do we divide fractions? Remember, we got to flip this, turn this into multiplication and flip this guy around. So this is going to be 1 times, got to flip this, this guy. So this is going to be g cubed over 1. So I have 1 times g cubed over 1 is just g cubed, okay? So that's like a whole, you know, that was like a lot, right? So if I thought about 1 over g to the negative third power, you know, it's like, oh, I got to do this and this and this and this and this and this just to get to that g cubed. Well, yes, that's the long way. And you should conceptually understand that. You should have the algebra skills to be able to handle that. It's important that you can interpret uh, that you know what's going on here algebraically and how to deal with these fractions. However, there's an easier way. And when I show you this, you're going to be like, oh, my goodness, Mr. Teacher, why do you torture me with all these long ways? Well, you know, you got to know how to do things the long way before you show me the easy way. Okay, so here is the rule, okay? See here I have g to the negative third power. It's all I need to do is move it. If I want to make this g to the positive third power, all I all I do is move it to the numerator, okay? So g to the third power over 1, or just g to the third power. So here is the deal, okay? So you're like, wait, 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 what did you do? No, I'm going to explain this again. If we want to change the sign of the exponent, okay, so here, this is negative. If I want to make a positive, wherever its location is, I just move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. So I'm like, oh, I don't want this negative. I want a positive, so move it upstairs, g cubed, okay, or g cubed over 1, which is the same thing as g cubed. That's all you have to do. So now let's go back to this. If I have x to the negative 2 power, well, I can think of this as a fraction like over 1. Okay, so in other words, x to the negative 2 over 1 is the same thing as x to the negative 2. We just don't write it over 1. Okay, just, I just want you to understand this. So if I want to um, uh, get rid of that negative 2, or if I just put this whole power down to the opposite side of the fraction bar, that would be 1 over x squared, okay? This is our rule, okay? In other words, this is the rule right here, this a to the negative n, 1 over a to the n. So basically, the whole deal is this. When you, you can do whatever you want to do with powers, okay? Let's just do something here, g to the negative 7 over g squared, okay? Now, of course, I can combine these guys, but I don't want to, yeah, let's actually do it this. Let's use another variable. How about x squared? Okay. So I have the x squared living in the denominator and the g to the negative uh, 7 in the numerator. Well, if I just, you know, I can do whatever I want in algebra. I could be like, all right, this guy, I'm going to move you downstairs, and this guy, I'll move you upstairs, okay? So what happens there? Well, the exponent signs change. They become opposite whatever they are. So g to the negative 7, if I move it down in the denominator, okay, that's going to be g to the positive 7. If I move this x to the positive uh, 2, okay, x squared in the numerator, in the numerator excuse me, the denominator, and I move it up in the numerator, it's going to become the opposite of what it, what it was, negative 2. Okay, so hopefully I'm explaining this uh, clear and understandable. But that's basically what the rule is. You don't have to go through all this, you know, complex fraction stuff here, okay? In other words, 
uh, just what I showed you there a minute or two ago with everything. So that's basically it. So with that being, uh, you know, stated, let's go ahead and get rid of this here. Let's go in and continue on with these other problems. Now I could uh, simplify these further, but let's just focus in on how to deal with the powers. So let's take this guy. Let's move him down in the denominator and let's move this guy upstairs. I could leave this downstairs, uh, down in the denominator, but we have options, okay? I'm like, I want to get rid of the negative power. So if I move it downstairs, it becomes positive. So I could be like this, 1x to the 7th times x cubed, okay? I'm like, ah, you know what? Let's move that x cubed upstairs. All right, no problem, okay? But now it becomes x to the negative 3, and I'll leave my positive x to the positive 7th uh, power down in the denominator. All these are equivalent um expressions okay now my goal is to simplify this i have the same base x i can here i can multiply these guys together really technically the answer would be one over x to the 10th power but i digress what i'm trying to get you to get comfortable with is dealing with negative exponents how we shift them upstairs and downstairs and how the signs become opposite on those exponents all right okay i think i have one more problem here for you Okay, so you want to go ahead and uh, pause the video and just maneuver these guys around. Let's get rid of the negative exponents, okay? All right, so I got a negative exponent here, got a negative exponent here. How do I get rid of them? Well, just bring this guy downstairs. That negative will go away, and I got it. This is positive, so I'll leave him there, and then this is positive. I'll leave that there, and then I'll bring this guy up there. So let's deal with that y to the negative 2. I have my x to the 7th and I have my y, okay? I'm keeping them in place because they're already positive. So my y to the negative two power, okay? I'll bring this guy down here, and now that negative two becomes positive two, and this x to the negative three power, I'll bring this up to the new bear, becomes the opposite what it is. It's negative down here, so it's going to be positive there. And then we could finish this problem. Again, now this is um, multiplication of powers, but here this would be x, we can, same base, I can add the exponents, x to the 10th, and this would be y, this is actually the one there, okay, I can um, add these together, and that would be three, and then we would be done, and we would be happy, and we would get many A pluses and 100%, which is awesome, okay? So again, negative uh, exponents, uh, you know, it depends on how your teacher may teach this. Uh, um, I just like to like show you the long way, all right? And be like, okay, hey, here's the long way to doing something. You need to understand that. But then there's like, hey, how can we, you know, you know always think of these these exponents, powers and exponents and stuff so we can always get it right, okay? Because that's what we're interested in. We want to understand this because if you understand math, that's what makes, you know, makes the subject worth learning, okay? Nothing is worse than, you know, sitting in class and not really just being bored and be like, oh, I hate math and this and that. You know, I know I understand that math's not everyone's favorite subject, okay? I don't expect you to be as excited about math as I am, although I hope to, uh, you know, you know, change that. But, um, you know, if you have to take a class, if you have to learn math, then learn it the right way. If you're not practicing math, you know, if you're not doing your homework, if you're not taking notes, then you're just going to, you know, you're just wasting your time. You're going to get frustrated, okay? But math is definitely worth learning, all right? Get the help you need. If you like my teaching style, if you like this video, by the way, please consider smashing a like button. That definitely helps me out. And uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I'm posting stuff all the time because I am obsessed with teaching mathematics. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I already have hundreds and hundreds of videos there for you. But if you want my best math help, uh, definitely check out my math help program. All right. So with that being said, I uh, definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.